My name is Dylan Krieger. My, my name. Okay, what does that say? To say something, I would have to reveal something. God forbid I do that. What is a blog? Why do we blog? We blog to exist, therefore we, we are idiots. November 7th, 2012, having been re-elected to the office of one of the world's most powerful positions, U.S. President Barack Obama's photo becomes the most retweeted photo in history. As more than 600,000 Twitter users pass a photo along to their followers, the photo in question is not an official presidential portrait or even a candid snap from the candidate's election night headquarters. It is a picture of him embracing his wife. One man's deeply personal moment is shared with millions around the world thanks to Twitter. One man's deeply private moment becomes inextricably entwined with his public persona. How did we get here? How have the barriers of our personal lives merged into this public network where even our most intimate feelings can suddenly be viewed and interacted by total strangers? And is this what we want? If so, why? In this film, we'll explore the rise of personal storytelling through social networks and specifically through the rise of the blog, how personal life sharing became the norm and some of the reasons as to why online sharing has become such a vital part of the human experience. Open Diary launches in October of 1998, a completely free service. Open Diary gives users a place to write about whatever they want. Users are mainly anonymous and, like the name suggests, treat the site like a diary, writing personal entries that chronicle their days as well as using the site as a place to vent and ask for advice about any aspect of their lives. Each entry appears on its own page with a place for notes at the bottom. Open Diary is the first blogging platform to allow users to leave notes or comments on each other's posts, something that would become a staple for future blogging sites. Thanks to the anonymity of Open Diary, most users feel comfortable to be completely honest. Unlike in the real world, users are not greeted by judging expressions. In the safe sphere cloaked by computer screen and username, personal stories begin surfacing. Personal journal makes its move from the individual bedroom to the world wide web. A little over a year later, in April 1999, LiveJournal launches. Essentially, LiveJournal is open diary with a, lo with a lot more features. Features that encourage the user to share more about themselves through the online world. Users can upload avatars to their accounts to imitate their likeness, or the likeness they wish they had. Before making a post, the user has an option to choose a current emotion from a pull-down menu or tell their readers what they are currently watching or listening to. Multiple posts appear on one page, with the ability to view each post individually. LiveJournal also has a larger focus on communities and groups. Users can join groups to discuss various topics of interest. These personal connections aid the rhizomatic spread of the individual story. The personal story now has a new life and even face. The more users share and connect, the more they are encouraged and rewarded by the system. LiveJournal offers users something more than a platform to connect and share. It offers users the ability to create a profile that they can mold and model in accordance to what they want to represent. It gives users the control of identity and the liberty to express freely. Blogs like LiveJournal offer a support system in an actual social domain, which many lack in their physical lives. Blogging becomes a way to immortalize your life experience. The act of online journaling suggests longevity and extends your personal life to a wide array of people. Life is essentially immortalized because one's existence continues to live in a cyber environment. Looking very similar to and having similar features of its predecessors was Zanga, which launches in 2000. Zanga's rise marks one of the first big shifts in online diary sharing. Unlike with LiveJournal and Open Diary, Zanga begins to break down the wall of anonymity. Zanga becomes very popular with high school students who use their real names. With the anonymity gone, the social network starts to break through to the real world. Zanga helps to tear down the walls between anonymous online identities and real-world identities. MySpace provides users with a sledgehammer. 
MySpace launches in 2003 and encourages users to share thoughts, pictures, music, links, videos, and much more. The layout is completely user customizable. Many users share their real names and utilize the site to keep in contact with friends and family, as well as for joining groups, making new friends, or even dating. With a focus on connecting virtually with our real-world connections, by June 2006, MySpace becomes the most visited website in the U.S. In the early 2000s, while MySpace is creating a space for online personas to emerge, two other networks are focusing on online storytelling, namely the blog. In 1999, Pyra Labs launches Blogger. The name itself provides a clue to the network's intent to tap into the popularity of blogging and make it easy for just about anyone to become a blog creator. One of the first widely available tools devoted to the practices of blogging within three years of launching. Blogger has hundreds of thousands of users sharing everything from the mundane to deeply personal stories about their lives. Around 2001, developers begin to piece together a software that will become known as WordPress. Unlike Blogger, WordPress is entirely open source, so the power to use technology to tell an individual story shifts even more into the hands of the individual. Not surprisingly, these stories began to take on lives of their own, spreading far from their original roots. In 2005, the New York Times publishes a term, Mommy Blogger, to refer to the growing population of women sharing their personal stories of parenthood on the web. In the mommy blogging world, incredibly personal and fleeting moments like a child's first steps can be captured forever in blog form. The solitude of being a stay-at-home mom is replaced by the connectivity of the blogosphere. In early 2008, a new mother named Jen Michelle joins WordPress and begins, like many of her friends, blogging about the day-to-day -day challenges of motherhood. Within four months of starting her blog, 35-year-old Jen Michelle is diagnosed with cancer, now facing the battle of raising an infant while going through chemo. Jen Michelle documents each step of the process in graphic detail, often with pictures. No intimate detail is spared from retelling on the blog. Family and friends read to keep up with her progress, but soon the rest of the world joins in. Other parenting bloggers begin to link to Jen Michelle's blog, spreading her story. In 2010, a Virginia area hospital shares his story of turning to the internet to get her through one of life's most personal journeys. Late that same year, Jen Michelle's story goes national when parenting site babyguru.com shares his story with its readers. Personal storytelling becomes one of the most commonplace activities on the web by the mid-2000s. With more and more platforms launching every day, Facebook launches in 2004 to select colleges. But before long, it opens its doors to the rest of the world in 2006. The features of Facebook are very similar to those of MySpace, but the layout isn't nearly as customizable, making the site faster, more streamlined, and uniform. In March 2006, the Twitter ad catches. Twitter is a microblogging site which allows users to post 140 character updates, called tweets. As a direct result of growing mobile technologies, users are encouraged to tweet from their mobile devices. Identities are generally public, and users post their thoughts ranging from what they had for breakfast to their opinion of politics. Group sharing emerges through the use of hashtags, which allows users to associate their tweets with a particular word or theme. The speed interface and mobile connectivity makes sharing fast and easy. With the click of a retweet button, one person's intimate thoughts can spread like wildfire through networks of millions of followers. Distilled into 140 characters, the mundane feels as important as the international event, and both can live forever in a tweet. In October 2010, Instagram debuts its photo sharing app. Unlike other large social networking sites, Instagram only functions through mobile devices. With the emerging use of smartphones and tablets, snapping images and sharing is an easy task. Instagram made photo sharing fun by creating a social networking platform where friends can share their life experience via photos. Photos on Instagram can add a digital filter to create a visual aesthetic of personal choice. In an advancing visual society, Instagram becomes one of the most used social networking tools. In 2012, Facebook buys Instagram for $1 billion. 
Like Twitter, Instagram is Facebook friendly, which means tweets and photos can be uploaded onto your Facebook page. The ability to cross share between social networks extends the participatory factor. So why do we really blog? Why share so much of our personal selves in an impersonal digital world? Maybe it's the chance at immortality, a chance to show someone on the other side of the world that we exist. Maybe it's the opportunity to craft a virtual persona better than the one we were dealt in the physical world. In the virtual world, our role, our reach, our impact on the world seems limitless. So, is this what we really want? Only time will tell. Perhaps people, at least subconsciously, utilize social media as a way to live forever or at least to outlive their bodies. We constantly leave pieces of ourselves in cyberspace to confirm and document our existence. We know these pieces will outlive us and we hope that we may live forever through them. Is it possible that the desire to blog stems from our fears of death? If we consider this idea, it's certainly no surprise that blogging platforms have evolved into something more immediate and public, and that our virtual identities have become directly tied to our real-life identities.